we're seeing these transient light anomalies at a time period where we we at least didn't put anything we, up there this is from november 1949 to december 1958 which this is before sputnik which could be interesting yes because of the fact that it can't just be pointed to being starlink passing exactly. by this is led by beatrice villaroel and the the point of this project is to have a systematic comparison between the digitized versions and modern sky surveys, right? You look at the Palomar Observatory saw back then, yes. and you look at what we're looking at right now. Yes. And you've got an automated software that flags these vanishing, the present, present then, missing now. Initially, you've got a catalog of 100,000 transient candidates. And here we're seeing two different images, one from POS1, which is the first sky survey in POS2, and the circles represent two little spots that you can see are exactly not there, yeah, not there. in the second one, right? It's like pretty obvious that people are going to be skeptical about this, right? For example, it could just be plate defects. Sure. Right? The Earth's shadow test is, I think, a decisive diagnostic. So here's the logic. You've got the sun, you've got the Earth, and the Earth casts a shadow on the rest of space, right? right. When the moon goes in, in the Earth's shadow, that's how you get a lunar eclipse. So if we were to think that all of these things are plate defects, and not actual objects in the sky that are reflecting sun sunlight, then the number of things that are happening in Earth's shadow should be the same as outside Earth's shadow. Right. If, on the other hand, these objects are reflecting the light from the sun, then there should be fewer transients when I'm looking in Earth's shadow right. than when I'm not. Right. Okay? And I know the coordinate of the spot in the sky where I'm looking, right? Because each of these photographic plates has a right ascension and declination. I do have to do an assumption based on like how high I think these objects are. And at that altitude, I can calculate which objects are in Earth's shadow in which part is not, not right and then from that i get an expected number of 12 1200 objects but i only observe 349 mm -hmm. so that's a pretty statistically significant sample you know 7.6 sigma deficit of transients in the umbra that's not something that i think we can ignore uh, it's certainly like giving me pause I'll be honest. Which I want to say for the audience, <laughs> I've been working this guy for a long time. So to be giving him pause yeah. is, is... It's like, is yeah. The, 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 that's statistically significant. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You probably have, like, the number of times you've tried. I, I'm I, like, nah. I've tried so 